Hello everyone and welcome back to another 10 tier list. This time featuring all the infantry fighting vehicles from BMP3 to Warrior to Martyr in the game currently. And before we jump into that though, a quick shout out to the Warner League Season 2, which has its sign up closing in two days' time. So if you want to participate in the coolest Warner tournament there is, which has the best balance as well, and will only give you opponents of a similar skill level. Sign up for the Warner League Season 2, get yourself into the competitive scene, and have some fun over there. And yeah, all information down in the description. Let's get in here now with the French first, as the Amex 10P is the first alphabetically. And we're gonna jump in here with these little boys. And they are okay. Um, yeah, I would put them into C tier here. They only have a 20mm, but yeah, they're decently fast, they have smoke. That makes them quite okay. Um, the ten, uh, the MX ten P here, without the Milan, the one with the Milan, I would put into B tier. That's for five points. You get an eighty GM. Um, that's okay. Uh, Milan one is not that great, so it's not really a big boost, but it gets you somewhere. The twenty millimeter being the weakest auto cannon on I IV, so it's not that amazing. But yeah, both do what they need to do, and they're pretty cheap, so that makes them quite solid. And the, the uh, for forty points, getting in. ATGM vehicle is quite nice, so that makes the uh, Milan one a bit better. The MX-13, on the other hand though, costs the same as the MX-10P, has no smoke, which is a major, major debuff on IFVs, and also um, is slower. So that thing, I think, deserves a detail here. Uh, yes, it's still a cheap autocannon, but the no smoke is a major, major disadvantage, and it's still only one of those 20 mils. It uh, doesn't get your units fast to the front line, and it still doesn't have great armor or anything, so it dies there quite quickly, and it costs more than, for example, the BMD-1 here, and yeah, it just doesn't get the job done that well. The lack of smoke really is the big differentiator here between these two, as smoke can save you in so many situations and help you out. Uh, jumping over to another part of the map, uh, disengaging ATGMs, Disengaging bad engagements with tanks, helping out your infantry close to it as well to disengage. And that the AMX-13 just can't offer. BMD-1, similar kind of unit. And no smoke. Is a bit faster. Has forward deploy. And that, I think, keeps it in lower D uh, C tier here. Because its gun is pretty terrible. But it's only a 25 point unit. Uh, yeah, but no smoke. That's an issue. But it's 10 points cheaper here. The gun... Is a bit weaker as well, but that's it still gets you into the front line and yeah, gets the job done there. So I think it's kind of okay here. BMD-1 doing fine. Uh, the BMD-1P, I would say, is a lower B tier one. Still no smoke. That's really the big issues with the BMD-1s. They are decently fast though, and they are decently cheap as well. And yeah, getting an ATGM there for 40 points is quite nice, just like with the uh, MX-10 piece, and yeah, the, the main gun on these is pretty terrible, just like the BMP ones, but gets you an ATGM, and that is pretty helpful, so I would rank this one here as a B tier, uh, like lower B tier ATGM carrier. BMP-2 costs 10 points more, I would say it's slightly better, still no smoke, the no smoke holding it back a good bit as well, but it gets you a good ATGM, and um, it also gets you an auto cannon, and that auto cannon actually can do some damage. So I would put this here into a B tier as well as a decent functional IV with an auto cannon that still does a job, but it doesn't do it fantastically um, because it doesn't have smoke. So anything that fires with on it will hit it, and with only two front armor, these th tin boxes also explode quite quickly. So they have an issue there. Their soft firepower, thanks to the extra MGs, is quite nice as well on the closer ranges. But yeah, two front line also means that one shot dies to anything shooting at it, really. BMP-1, uh, SP-1, the one with only the gun from the East Germany. Another C tier one. It is cheap, but and it has smoke. That's what it gets over the BMP-1. But it's still... Um, doesn't really kill anything due to the terrible BMP-1 main gun, and it 
yeah, it's it's still relatively slow. It can't really kill anything on the battlefield, and it uh, is just there as an armor transport that can give a bit of fire support, can be a bit annoying, is another target for the enemy, and can give you a smoke screen cheaply. But that's about it there. And it is just a transport that can do its job. The BMP-1 SP-2 is the one with the really terrible ATGM that has a bit longer range though, uh, with 2,600 meters. So that's that's the only redeeming factor on that slow flying, <laughs> low damage ATGM though. All the other characteristics about it are terrible. The range on the Meliot GM is good, but accuracy with 40 is low, um, so speed is slow, damage is low with 16, really low as well. So it is, and uh, not that great in that regard, but it is cheap. Uh, I would put it in front of the BMP-1P because it still has smoke, and it yeah can go around 59 kmh. A bit slow, but yeah, it does a job still. Uh, the BMP-1P I would put around there. Um, five points more for a slightly better ATGM when it comes to accuracy and damage and speed, uh, but. Uh, lower range, so yeah, I, actually, usually it's it's kind of worth the five points, but it's still like if it would be the same price, this one would be a lot better with the five point difference. It's pretty close. It's kind of a side grade. Um, goes for the Soviet one, obviously, which is exactly the same, except it doesn't have resolute, so it's a bit a bit weaker. Um, yeah, goes for that as well. But uh, yeah, those all of those do their job okay but they don't really do them well, though it's just a... Since you got the price change, it is a viable IV again. Nothing great, nothing terrible. BMP2, that's a pretty solid IV still. It has a great auto cannon. The conquers with solid range, solid damage, solid accuracy, and the 30mm with solid range, solid accuracy, solid damage, um, and smoke. All of that is pretty nice. The forefrontal armor on it is pretty nice as well, and that really gives the BM uh, P2 good survivability, good damage, and just all around nice stats. And yeah, that gets it here into A tier. Can win with the auto cannon against a lot of I other IVs as well, thanks to its own forefrontal armor, and can shred through APCs and so on. Conquerors is a pretty potent ATGM as well, and all of that leaves it here. Uh, smoke going around and so on as well. BMP2 AG um, is a bit of a side crate. The AGS is still not really worth it. Unlike um, the BMP1 PG, which we will come to later, it has smoke though. It doesn't lose the smoke for the grenade launcher because the grenade launcher is in the rear uh, on the turret. And that uh, means that the smoke launchers are still around on it. So the BMP2 AG, just a bit of a side crate here. And the family still sitting in ATA here comfortably. Conquers. Uh, yeah, not really sure you want to pay the extra five bucks, but with the AGS being slightly buffed lately again, it might be worthwhile. And then the BMP 2D with its extra side armor and rear armor with only losing the amphibious capability, which you don't really want to use anyways, is a slight bit better. Does that extra side armor can come in handy against a couple of things going from 2 to 3 is quite significant, and the rear armor going from 1 to 2 actually means quite a bit as well. So, yeah, it means that the BMP-2D is just a bit more survivability, though obviously front armor would be the most impactful, it doesn't get that, so in the end, just a slight side grade here as well, that is a bit better than the rest, and yeah, goes up here on the tier list. BMP-3, even with the current price, still an S tier uh, IV. The long range High uh, speed, relatively low damage, but really high speed, long range, good accuracy. Uh, Con ATGM, that thing is just amazing, and it does really allow it to scare enemies away on the long range. And then the combination of auto cannon and HE gun means it deletes infantry as well. Plus five front armor means that a lot of things don't kill us with one shot. That kill other units with one shot. And that means it has a bit more survivability than the standard IV as well. Not quite tank range, obviously, but it is getting there. And it has a bit higher speed as well than the average 
Soviet IV going up to 63. So all in all, just really that upgrade that makes those 30 points absolutely worthwhile. Uh, and for the most part, like obviously in 27, where you get this, you also get the BMP 2s. So, some, and sometimes just for price sake, you want to mix a couple of those in as well. But in a lot of cases, the BMP 3 is just fantastic and the one you want to go for. And that infantry, the elite power of it is just unparalleled in IVs. Plus, its dual, dual link power of the gun is also top notch. Yeah, now we come to the BMP 1 PG and. I think that's another D tier addition here. You pay five points extra to the BMP one piece and you lose the smoke launcher. <laughs> and the smoke launcher is what makes the uh, the BMP ones actually viable in my eyes. And without that, it's just not viable. Like the grenade launcher doesn't help you out at all. Uh, if it would be 35 points as well, you could be arguing for it in some circumstances, but losing the smoke is a d major debuff getting the Grenade launcher is just a slight buff, and pay, having to pay extra for it is just not worthwhile. So, BMP one PG just something that you should avoid. And you get it in a lot of decks, but unfortunately, currently it's just not viable. Um, even with the buffs that the grenade launcher has got, the range is too low. You need to get too close, and then it just doesn't really do its job. So, yeah, D tier here for the BMP one PG. Then the M two A one Bradleys, which have a fantastic anti-tank power with the toe tube. And that's for how you want to use them. The only issue that, that these guys have is that they are pretty expensive for only having three frontal armor. So, and they're a bit on the slower end as well. And those three frontal armor means that a lot of decent things with, for example, Fagot ATGMs can one-shot them. And it's not the best for dueling other IVs, most other IFVs with ATGMs can one-shot them, the Milan one as well. Um, so you want to fight tanks of these things and infantry. The Bushmaster deletes infantry, the Toad 2 deletes tanks, but IVs delete the Bradley. And if you trade one for one, the Bradley always loses efficiency-wise. So i um a bit worried with this thing in that regard. Um, actually, let's put it into 8 here for that and put it the M2A2 Bradley up in S tier because it has the two extra front armor that protects it from getting one shot from all those cheap AD gems. The BMP2 still with the uh, Conquerors are the, kind of the counter here because they still trade, but then at that point it's 60 versus 80 points. And your Toe 2 still has good chances of hitting better than the uh, Conquerors, so not even really that. And yeah, that makes the A2 here a really good upgrade. Yeah, you pay 10 points extra, but the two frontal armors are a world of difference there. Going up from 3 to 5 is major, and those five frontal armor really help you through a lot here. And yeah, the Bradley uh, V here. Um, yeah, just being solid, but nothing super special. And then we got to the National Guard Bradley, which were 55 points a while back. Um, now, they are 60 points though. And that leaves them here in high B tier. They were 8 here for 50, uh, 55 points. For 60 points, they're just a bit worse than the BMP 2Ds. Like, they have obviously the National Guard debuffs, which is pretty significant with aim time and so on. Um, the HGM, the Ito, is good and has better base accuracy. But yeah, with all the debuffs, uh, that doesn't really matter. And it has less frontal armor um, than the um, the Soviet ones, so it gets one-shotted with the three frontal armor by all those 17 damage ATGMs. And yeah, that leaves it just a bit weaker than those BMP2s. But still okay. Um, it's still a cheap version that you kind of want to have in front of your Pred least on 24th as a bit of a cheap tanking unit, though with the 10-point price difference by now, I'm not quite sure how many you want of these anymore. With the 15 points, it was significant. And you've really wanted a lot, especially as you got the National Guard units on discount as well. Now, it's still okay. It still has a good ATGM, still has a good gun, but the debuffs there are real. So, yeah, not the highest fan of it here. And then we come to the Marder family of things, where we start with the Marder 1A2. And I would say this is another C tier unit. It gets an MG and one frontal armor over the MX 10P for five points, with the MG being like and 
yeah, being like the thing that makes it more mobile, speed and so on is the same. Uh, the auto cannons are copycats as well from of each other. So yeah, it's a bit better. Mm -hmm. Even four or five points more, but it's not that much better that I would put it widely above that. It still doesn't have an ATGM, and ATGMs on IFVs are pretty important. So yeah, you shouldn't get this unit too too much. And it still will lose thanks to the 20 millimeter not being so great against other IVs due to its lower range and lower accuracy and uh, relatively low pen due to range stacking. Um, yeah, it will lose to the other IVs in 1v1 situations as well for the most part. So it, even with the auto cannon battles. Uh, so yeah, Mater 1A2 here in C tier. Mater 1A2 Milan, I would put behind the MX10P Milan. It has a Milan, costs five points more, but yeah, having a Milan for uh, 40 points and, and for 45 points, even with the frontal armor distance, uh, difference, one gets one shot by Milan, and uh, like in the direct matchup, it's a slight bit better. But against tanks, the extra five points here do matter a bit, and then I would put it into B tier here. The Milan one, still not a great ATGM, but a decent one, and yeah, it's, it's a good uh, basis, better than Smokeless, better than the bad gun on the BMP ones and better than their eight gems as well. So still a B here unit, but not particularly amazing. Mother 1H3, I would put here because going from four to five front armor kind of means that it can um, bounce some of these auto cannons and then it can be a decent close range delete machine against other auto cannon um, AT gems also can survive a good bit more when it comes to um, infantry AT weapons, like 18 penetration infantry AT weapons still don't kill this, the 17 ones don't either, so like it has a bit more survival, again, uh, survivability with its 5 frontal armor against those, and that makes it quite worthwhile. And then, yeah, the, the Milan one, I would put around here still, uh, yeah, it's still a Milan 1-1, one, one, so it's not that amazing, but it does a job pretty well, and that it is quite nice. Um, yeah, it the survivability against other IVs auto cannons is quite nice with the five frontal armor, and that makes the 183s here somewhat worthwhile over the 182s. And yeah, in second pentagon here, I think you should go A3 if you can instead of the A2s for the most part. And then we get the warriors, which are unique in their speed, and yeah, the warrior with only a cannon um, pays for the speed and the slightly better cannon, uh, same price as the A3, the 1A3. I uh, would put it around here as well. Actually, might put both of these in front of the BMP1P. Uh, with only the weak HGM here on this thing and the main cannon being quite bad. Yeah, the, the, the warrior really pays for its price and its speed, and those are really good uh, uh, for its damage and its speed, uh, and uh, the Rarden is a really good gun, so the Rarden is quite nice there, smoke, speed, that really makes the warriors nice, you can overrun enemy positions quite nicely, though um, without an ATGM it's still not what you really want. The Milan 101 hey, is on the same level as the Mater 1A3, has less front armor, so I would actually put a bit behind it, and has more speed though, so that's the the payoff and a better gun, two front armor less versus a better main gun with the Rarden and better speed. I guess the main gun makes it a bit more mobile. It's on the same level here, and then with the applique though, it goes through the roof because paying only ten points difference for seven points different and f more accuracy on the damage scale like and more frontal armor like the 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 price difference here just doesn't add up in comparison to like how much you pay for the upgrade on the Bradley's for example the warrior plea is heavily underpriced or like five points underpriced at least and um, yeah i would say five points is where it's at but it has more frontal armor and more speed than the Bradley and it only has less one less penetration it ATGM has a bit less range and so on, so it is a good bit worse than the toe. But the base chassis of this thing is fantastic. Four frontal armor, 
It has the Milan 2, which can one-shot a lot of things. For example, like this thing here can one-shot um, Leo 1s or the French AMX 30s and <laughs> all that on this fast chassis and a good main gun as well with the Raiden. The Warrior Pleak, actually, I would even rate it higher than the Brentley at the moment. It's a fantastic little IFB. And filling out the tier list here quite nicely as well. So, yeah, let me know down below what your favorite IFB is and what you think about the tier list. Would you rate any of these here higher? Would you rate any of these here lower? I think the IFBs all make a lot of sense currently. Like, there's few that you really don't want to take. Even the MX-13 you sometimes take because of the infantry that are in them. Only the PG really falling out of flavor. But we are living in a bit of an IV meta again, and I kind of like it. I miss these guys. They're not the delete machines that they had been in some past patches, but I have a lot of fun of them. I hope you do as well. And yeah, if you want to see more tier lists, let me know down below as well which kind of tier list you want to see next. And have a good day, guys. Bye-bye, and see you next time.